And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. But originally, when we did the Chandra, Shonda Pierce stuff, we were going to talk about this movie. And then you're like, dude, uh, what I found on Netflix was different. And of course, it everyone, was gold. It was gold. Everyone knows the Shonda Pierce um, saga. We had two episodes de- devoted to her comedy special. I have a gun. Yeah, <laughs> sure do. What do you feel about that? Oh, man. I, I can't wait to get into a debate after this, after we go through this movie of uh, comparing the two. Shonda and our main character that we're going to find out in this movie that we get into. But the subject or the... Them as people. But which one? The subject people? Kind of how shady they are. They'll be getting... So you're saying... The subject The people. subject people. Subject not, people. not the guy... No. No. Guy. Well, let's just... We'll set up the movie. Yeah. The, um, Jay called me, or he... Yeah, you called me oh, about yeah. this. Jay called me. He's like, hey, man, there's this documentary on Netflix that you have to fucking watch simply for the reason... He's like, I don't even want to say what the documentary is about, but you just have to watch it because it happens in Aurora, Colorado, <laughs> where I grew up. So I'm like, which I was unaware of existence so, until I met Dan Soder, and you've made it so legendary for me. Yeah. My head white garbage. Yeah, well, on the cusp of nice and on the cusp of shitty. It's right in the middle. It's like as middle class as you can get. It's right in Aurora, is lower middle class parts. Yeah, and then parts like to the south, like by Centennial or nicer. I grew up the same exact way. Yeah. Yeah. I was lower. We were lower middle. We weren't like fucking. I mean, overall, if you can see yeah. my grandmother and shit like that, like you know, everyone was lower middle class. Actually, my mom started making money even lower middle class, uh, and then but in a neighborhood of upper middle class. Yeah, when I met Colin Quinn, the second time I met him, he was making fun of me on the phone with Bobby Kelly, and he goes, and Bobby Kelly goes, yeah, this fucking dumb dance out of from a, where are you from? Fucking Colorado, and Colin's like, eh, fucking. Yeah, Colorado. I don't really know what's going on there. And I go, he goes, where are you from in Colorado? I go, oh, it's called Aurora. And Colin Quinn just nailed it. He goes, yeah, it was like a, uh, you know, like a nice suburb in the 60s and 70s and then decayed in the 80s and 90s. I'm like, that's exactly what it was. That's almost exactly what it was. But it just depends on where you were in Aurora. Like North Aurora is, is really tough. It's like a really bad neighborhood. And then like, as you go south, it gets better. And I was like, right in the middle. I was like, right mm-hmm. in the middle of Aurora. So, uh, Jay tells me, he's like, you have to watch this. I put it off. I put it off. And then on Christmas Day, I sit down with Trish and I'm like, hey, Jay told me we got to watch this movie. Let's watch Voyeur. Now, my mom is the person that you drank knows. it in with your mom. Yeah, dude. And it oh. was so much better to watch it with Trish. I bet. For multiple. Trish. She started throwing them back. I went and got high in the garage. So it was like we were both tilted, both a little fucked up watching this movie. And my mom knows she's been the adult. Like, she moved us to Aurora. So she knows, like, I know the streets, but I don't know, like, the weird specific shit of maybe in a neighborhood I didn't grow up in. Sure. But my mom knows just basically, it's like mom knowledge. Mm-hmm. She's got that mom knowledge of just where shit is. So immediately... Uh, it's, the documentary is called Voyeur. And, uh, it's about a famous journalist named Gay Talese, who did a bunch of books, uh, about the mob, um, called, I think it's called My Brother's Keeper. There's, 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 he's a very old man now. Now he's an old man, but they show clips from the 60s and 70s. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff where you kind of see his relevance and, like, and how sucks. he's bigger. But he lives in a very nice brownstone in New York City. Uh-huh. He's dressed elegantly. He talks about when he was a kid, his dad was a tailor. So he really cares about class. He's very classy. And this is what makes this whole documentary even better in my eyes, that it's a bonfire topic, because he's like the epitome of class. And then what they do is they really angle it against... He wears a hat. He wears a hat and an overcoat. Overcoat and a hat. And what they do is they angle that with the owner of a motel named Gerald Foose, <laughs> who lives in Aurora, Colorado. So basically the ploy is... It looks like what I will grow up to look like. Yeah. <laughs> old Jay? Old I never Foose. Thought, old Foose. You have old Foose? Foose. You have old hey, Hey, look, if they, didn't want to, if they didn't want me to watch them shower, check your room for holes. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Or am I right? Uh... So Gay Talese goes on to say that this guy is a motel owner who is also a voyeur, and he watches the people in his motels. He watches them all the time. He just constantly watches them, and he wanted to come clean to Gay Talese, who had written these articles. Uh, he wrote a book about a sex, about an open sex camp. There's some stuff that we'll, we'll touch on, but mainly the point is we want to go through this movie to watch because Gerald Foose is fucking hilarious because what he is is you start to think he's like, at first you think he's a pervert, then you kind of think like maybe he's just misunderstood and then you're like, oh, this guy's kind of a jack off. <laughs> and that's why Jay's saying by the end, you're like, 
Oh, Gay Talese is a jack off too. Uh, like they kind of mirror each other about how they're like self important and they really kind of put themselves and, and, and high up on this pedestal, but it's two hand jobs stroking each other. Exactly. And then they go, there's a parting of ways and then like a comeback together. But oh, now it's we got all, it all based in narcissistic rage and insanity. Everybody, the bonfire proudly resents to you. The voyeur. Uh, he calls himself the voyeur. He does. Gerald Foose oh, calls himself the voyeur. Oh my god, third person talks as the voyeur. I love it. I love a nice D. I love a nice fucking Ricky Henderson with your own nickname. Now the voyeur gonna watch. Okay, beloved, we are gathered. Okay, do we start? He is dressed like a, like a shitty mob boss. He's just, from, like, he's just like a guy who looks at people who fuck through holes in wood. <laughs> <laughs> at the Bonfire SXM will, uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. It's, it's on Netflix. Hey, doop doop And you can follow along if you have Netflix. You know what we should do when we do stuff like this and we time code stuff for yeah. notes? We should, especially if we typed them in well... We should tweet out the notes. It would be yeah. fun for people to look at the notes, so if they just want to kind of like skim through and see the parts that, like, yeah. to laugh at. So, so at the Bonfire SXM, we'll tweet out the notes. We'll, and we'll, Dan, Dan, we'll tweet out Dan's time. It's always fun. There's, there's, there's Dan's time coding on this. I write the notes very hilarious. I see, think. I don't. I just minor just like Vince and how he watched. He uh, goes to motel no. and watches. Yeah, I'll just be like, does she have a... Does she just have like a half black drifter baby living in her house? Yeah. What the fuck with this lady? <laughs> That'll be like my notes. Uh, so my, my, no, mine are too fucking boring. Uh, but let's start it off. This is the interview with Gerald Foos, the owner of the motel. Okay. He kind of explains who he is, and, and more importantly, he like talks about what his kinks are with it. Because again, he tries to make something that definitely is perverted sound not perverted. Oh, desperately he's desperately, trying to Desperately, like, that. he clings to that. I do believe that he was never caught. Like, he came forward with a story himself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? he reached like, out he, to Gay Talese. And the of limitations is done. Well, with, there's, there's parts about that. You'll okay, see. Okay, okay. He became a voyeur. I was brought up in a very uh, secluded uh, sexual environment. Yeah. Where my mom and dad never told me anything about sex. Yes. And I had to learn it on my own. I, mean, I knew that we all did. Whose parents fucked in front of them? My <laughs> like, parents never gave. Me, my parents <laughs> never filled me in on sex That's at all. Not weird. either one of them talked to me about it at all. I mean, I think I've told the story before. My mom was cooking, and I walked in the kitchen, and I was like, "Is sex when a man puts his penis in a woman's vagina?" My mom was like, "Yeah, that's it." And then that was all we've ever talked about sex. She's like, is that really it? She goes, I mean, I'm not going to tell you the deep, dark stuff. Yeah, she goes, I don't know. There's, there's some spitting and some talking. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe you like a guy enough to take a digit in the two. <laughs> she goes, hold on. i got to flip this egg. <laughs> Breakfast for dinner, baby. <laughs> I go, Mom, is that sex? She goes, yeah. You know, I don't really know if that's the striking balls of it. But <laughs> it's definitely a box. Come on, scoop the nuts. Is that sex? <laughs> I love the term soup to oh, nuts. Oh, me too. That's a great Fenoya. Fenoya brought that one into my life pretty good. Soup to nuts. Soup to nuts. What's this one cost us? <laughs> soup to nuts. It's so great. Soup to nuts. Don't you want to? has got a lot of those things that make you want to like incorporate it into yeah. your... Uh, I'll tell you, the first time he... Uh, the first time we were having a football catch ever, and I missed a catch, and he goes, nice hands, feet. That's <laughs> I don't right. know why it made me laugh so much. Dude, there's a soup to nuts is an Eng American English idiom that conveys the meaning of from beginning to end. Yeah, it's deleted from the description of a full course dinner. Uh, dude, the one that, um, oh, God damn it. Oh, I'm reading, I just started reading this book, and in the introduction, par in the beginning of the book, the guy goes, he like leads this thing up, he goes, anyways, amigo. And I went, ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really annoyed me out of that. Uh, soup to nuts. Soup That's to nuts great is, term. is fucking great. But, um, all right, so this is back to Gerald Foos talking about his restricted sexual life. And more to sex. Anita! I didn't know that it had to be more. I oh. told Donna that I was a voyeur. She says, isn't that what they call a uh, peep and Tom? It just it hit me again as I just saw her. Again, I haven't watched this in weeks, so I've almost Dude. like forgotten. Oh, I, you I, forgot I, about Anita? I've, I've taken in so much information since I saw this. You will? Uh, let me just... I forgot about Anita, but I just saw her face, her little chipmunk cheek face here a second ago, and i got to say, I remember, before you go a step further in this, I'll tell you, I don't care if you're cross-country trucking right now and you want to be entertained. <laughs> Turn this off. And do not listen again until you listen on the Sirius XM app when you can... 
take a look at this woman first. Yeah. You cannot proceed much further from right now unless you look at Gerald Foose's wife. What she, let me describe she, her. This guy unabashedly, as you'll see, is about to start laying out a story. This is not him being pushed for information. He can't wait to tell the world about how much he loves peeking at other people. Yeah. And this chubby cheeked dimwit <laughs> just she's so feel uh, sympathetic i don't know what to say to hey, let me we, we're gonna get deeper into that sure sure I, sure i truly believe anita is the character the main character of this story it should be i think there are moments where my heart breaks for that woman oh, and yeah. parts where i cannot stop laughing <laughs> yeah, yeah. She uh, is, she's exactly that part she is the mother from she's on the same level as the mom from making a murderer where the mom from making a murderer is like i don't know why you're, you're gone and you die and then steve, you know steven did you do it and it's like would you say the worst or the best or the best way i should say to describe her is she is like Pathetic. Uh, there is, yeah. Do you know what I mean? She's like, yeah. she's so like, there's no thing uh, about dude, you. Uh, so let's, uh, there's a scene in the, later in the in the film that we're going to get to where she says something where you go, all right, dumb, dumb. <laughs> yeah, like, there's, yeah. So this is, when it, but yeah, it's all coming back to you. When it flashes his wife, you kind of see that this is, when you when you watch the movie and you go back and watch it knowing how the movie goes and you you form an opinion of Gerald Foose when you go back and watch it you go oh this guy definitely is a piece of shit oh yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. and he like he tries to spin it several times he can't and I says yeah even there he goes yeah but well, I call, call it voyeurism <laughs> I says I want to get a left he's been bald since okay, he was fucking right there. 15 <laughs> yep also he looks like every single buddy's dad from the 80s if actually he looks like time to make the donuts <laughs> and also he calls it his laboratory this is what i mean where he tries to avoid saying that he's creepy says isn't that what they call uh peep and tom yeah <laughs> and i yeah. says yeah i go yeah oh yeah but i call it voyeurism I says, I want to get a lavatory. And she says, what? And I said, I want to buy a lavatory. Lavatory. Oh, no, a lavatory. I think I know how I'm going to do it. He says lavatory. Dude, here's the thing about Gerald you're going to learn. There's certain words that just really piss you off when he says, when he says window. If he says window again, I'm going to fucking You're crack certain this, this laboratory? You don't speak a word. I think he's saying, well, listen. Can I tell you this right I tell you why lavatory makes sense, though? He wants to peek at people being naked and shit. Sure. So a bathroom would make sense. Oh, no, Jay, you don't speak high plains garbage. I don't. I, do. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I defer, but if I'm I saying want, it sounds like he's saying lavatory. If I want to know what someone in Delco County is mumbling about, I'll ask you to translate it for me. If you're up in the high plains of Colorado and you want to know what a lavatory is. Is it possible to spell hoagie with 14 O's? <laughs> yeah. I just heard, hoagie. I just think I heard a 16 O hoax. Uh, <laughs> 16 O hoax. I'm telling you right now, it says lavatory. Rewind it and watch. Yeah, rewind it. I'll take it. And I'll tell you this. By the end of this documentary, you're going to just go outside and go, window, 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 window. Because he goes, window. Uh, look through a window. Through a window. There's nothing worse than a documentary about a guy who watches other people and can't say window. <laughs> it's almost it's like, most of where you're watching <laughs> through. It's what yeah. you talk about. It's your view. <laughs> I says, I want to get a lavatory. Lavatory. Says, what? And I said, I want to buy a lavatory. But it has to be absolutely foolproof insofar as anyone ever discovering it. There it is, baby. Aurora. The street was basically built for tourist travel. That's the kind of people that, that occupied the rooms. Yeah. I couldn't really find what I was looking for. And all of a sudden, I came by the Manor House. The Manor House Motel. Manor House Motel in Aurora, Colorado. It is, if you look it up, it's not there. Uh, it got demolished in around 1998. No, 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 no. Uh, it actually got demolished pretty recently in the last five years. He isn't sold some, it. Isn't that some argument in the documentary? Too, he about sold that? it in 1997. Well, there's a thing where... There's almost a thing where there's like a chance... He's a liar. The He's, whole thing's made up. No, not the whole thing. There's things that's definitely inflated. A bulk, sure. It goes it goes through a lot of this stuff. Is that there's a chance you always got to doubt Gerald because as Gay Talese says throughout the entire movie, he's it's a one source story, mm -hmm. so you don't really have anybody else to reflect the the whole thing of the story. But what's fucking nuts about this, and and, and just takes me personally out of this entire movie, whenever they show the manor house or they or they show wherever it is, I know exactly where that is. It's on Colfax and Peoria. It's just a little bit for sure. I played soccer down the street from there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buzz 
The, the mechanic that used to bang my mom? Oh, yeah. About four blocks away from there. Really? Yeah. Like, I know exactly where the manor house was. It's across the street from what is now a medical center. Did the your Aurora- mom give any weird... Dude, tingles. I that, started that when she started noticing your mom when, at the place. When she started now, because first off, you got to remember something about my mom. She wasn't cheating on a husband or anything. She had her own domain. Yeah, maybe she didn't want to go knees behind the ears for while her baby boy's there. Or you're saying you're saying T the D wanted some nasty motel sex. Yeah, or she may wanted to yell out some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. She didn't have to be muffled. Uh, what's funny <laughs> is you say that is when my mom. What if Buzz was not actually watching other dudes work your mom over yeah. and he would just kind of watch? This is starting to get dark. But uh, <laughs> I would say when we were watching this and she's like, I know where that is. That's Peoria and Ursula. Or no, she goes, that's Colfax and Ursula. And I was like, okay. And then she uh, went, why and did you say that so fast? Yeah, went, I legitimately Oof. go. She makes goes, my pussy hurt still. <laughs> oh. She goes, it's like, must be like when Theismann watches that hit on LT. <laughs> she goes, ugh. I'm getting some soul was hanging out. Ooh. <laughs> She's some real puzzle arthritis. <laughs> goes, I didn't know there was bones in your lips. I am locking up. Ooh. What is that cartilage? It hurts. She goes, either I'm getting flashbacks from this documentary or it's about to rain a ton. <laughs> <laughs> Storm coming in. Yeah. Feel it in my box. <laughs> I can feel it. My box is throbbing. It means there was going to be at least two feet of snow this way. Um, yeah, no. But I definitely know exactly where this was. Great. And it's insane because it takes me out of it. Every time they show it, I'm like... Is this getting more towards junk or... Junk. This is getting worse. Is this in your area or is this... This is off... Uh, this is two exits on 225 away from me. North. North. This is two X. Ex- because you're saying north gets yeah. shittier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South is, gets better. Yeah, absolutely. And okay. this is, and well, 225 run east to west with the two main highways. Aurora's in the middle and it's connected like, there's like a... Is there any wealthy area of Aurora or does no. it go up, does it go from the lower only, middle to upper middle or, upper or, 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 or low? Uh, it goes low income to, uh, upper middle. Uh, upper middle. Okay. Uh, there's no wealthy. Okay. There's definitely no wealthy. The wealthy, um. But a they, two car family doing okay for yeah. themselves. Oh, okay. suburbs. Sure. Definitely. Most of it's all suburbs. It's, ju- it's all suburbs, but it's all like depending on income level. Um, there's this part that my high school filtered into. My, my high school was like part Aurora and then the people like with a little bit of money that were right outside Aurora. It's called unincorporated Arapahoe County, or it was growing up, and now they changed it to Centennial because they just didn't want to be associated with Aurora. <laughs> so they're like, "No, we're sent." And now Centennial is an actual city, but it or not a city, but it's like a town, whatever you want to call it. But for so long, like rich people, if you're like, "Oh, so you live in Aurora?" They're like, "I live in unincorporated Arapahoe County," and you're like, "Fuck, unincorporated, you. go fuck yourself." You're just giving your. I just live in the Yukon territories. Yeah, <laughs> fucking sovereign nation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it, yeah, so this is crazy for me because this is like when you said it's from where I'm from. I'm like, uh, I wonder where it's from, and then like watching it with T of the D. Having pushel flash, pushel flashbacks. Oh yeah, it was really rattling me. She started getting the itch. She goes, oh, I could probably go down to America's Bar right now and do a Jaeger and a beer. <laughs> yeah. What? Because because watching Voyeur makes your mom wet. <laughs> <laughs> My mom goes, those were the days. I go, huh? She goes, wow. She goes, Dan, is it getting humid in here? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab a washcloth. She goes, yeah, I gotta go take a cold shower. <laughs> I'm gonna, go get, I'm gonna go get a damp rag. I'll be right back. She goes, I gotta go check Buzz's Instagram. Yeah, I'll be right back. I gotta go take a swipe real quick. Courtesy yeah. swipe. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm frogging up the couch. <laughs> 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 Woo, it's getting swampy in mom's slack, son. Uh, uh, I'm going to go upstairs and yeah. washcloth this thing off real quick. Uh, yeah, these pants are just leaking right through like a KFC <laughs> napkin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting right through these things. Uh, all right, let's get, um, oh, so now go to, go to the next time marker, 646, where uh, Gerald <laughs> talks about how he watched the people through the vents now the situation that they couldn't hear me they couldn't see me but i could hear them and see them all right he always really just tried to make it not creepy co-owners until her death and the second marriage that woman anita clark young anita you just show that picture 
So you're like, okay, Take buddy. Take a picture of that tweeted out at the bonfire. I mean, right away, you're like, young okay, Anita, buddy. A young need is stacked. You got those big old yams. Just goofy face, but, you know, a fucking hard goofy body. Goofy face, but, like, she, she doesn't, she's not, I mean, even if she's, like, not, she's not thin, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he hit on her with voyeur terms? He goes, I was watching you, and <laughs> I couldn't help notice. That makes sound like something that might be fun for you. I can't wait to get to Anita. I didn't hear you. She looks like, perfect. I mean, he looks like he's sedated. Her he and goes, then lets her out. Aren't I right? Yeah, that was right. She behaves like, uh, do you remember the movie? Was that Hannibal when Hannibal cut open Ray Liotta's yes. head and took a piece of his brain out? And he's kind of like, we're having fun, right? Yeah, he goes, she's sort of like that. Yeah. She's like, like, uh, like lobotomized by, 1, by him. But in this picture, she came into the game like she definitely, by the way, could have done better in her youth. And Gerald's first wife. Anna, freaky deaky, helps him buy the motel, knows he wants to watch. Yeah, and that's, the, yeah, exactly. And Anita is, she's a player, but man, I'll tell you what, she could have done better. Cause young Gerald Foose was garbage. Nah, but I'll tell you this. He Traveling ate, salesman face. Yeah, definitely. Always wore those, uh, always wore those kind of shaded glasses that make him look like a pit boss at a fucking sad casino. He didn't own one pair of pants that didn't have a button and a hook. Oh, 1000%. I mean, his, his, his fucking fupa bumped out like a sailboat. Oh sail. yeah, for sure, for sure, and very wide ties. Christine, yes, you're attracted to him. No, it's crazy to me that this picture is only 15 years old. Wait, that's... it says 2002 in the corner here. Wait, that's Anita in 02. So what? in 15 years, she went from that to what she is in the documentary. Oh my God, that has been a rough decade. That's a rough decade. Also, I think or... Anita got him in 1990, so he must have got Anita in real fighting shape. Yeah, and he was never a good-looking guy. But again, he's a creep. Creep can talk dumb women into shit, because she's right. definitely, as you will see, a dullard. Yeah, uh, she is. It is not good. She is uh, what they would call legally dim. Yeah. Great rack. Great no, that's rack. what I'm saying. I mean, she has fantastic... You can see, by the way, in this picture, the nips are where they're supposed to be and shit. Yeah, they look like they is, stay up. Yeah. She's got some real Kimberly Cups boobs. That's, she's got some great big titties. The real, is okay. It's a real 90s porn reference. This guy did reel her into some fucking uh, pretty, like... Devious shit. <laughs> Again, here's what's weird about it. Look, if you reel somebody into something, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call that? It's deviant, yeah. right? You lead somebody into that with your, your, your girlfriend or your girl that brings your boyfriend into that, some deviant shit, and it's something you're doing together. Yeah. Like, I get that. I get joining in the thing, but she, this isn't her thing at all. It's like, when you realize you're gonna have to share time with your guy with not like his work. Well, there's a part like, that, there's a part later where Gerald and I, I want to see if it's coming up real quick. Uh, you'll see it's coming up in a little bit, but he, he, when it starts revealing his sex chart, Gerald starts telling a story about how he would go and watch like it's a shift in the coal mine. He was like, yeah. I was up there and she'd bring me a Coke and then sometimes she'd even bring me a sandwich and she'd say, poor old Gerald's up there. It's like, dude, you're watching people jerking off. Stop acting like you're doing this honorable thing, you fucking creep. Exactly. And I'm saying, but she falls like so in line. Well, so watch, I'm saying, so so like, someone agreeing to share their time. Like, well, you let's go, meet Anita because this is, please. this is a clip. Oh yeah. Let's do it. Adequately is this your first wife. But what's amazing is you have to found two women who are cooperative. Maybe somebody might say that was an act of God. No. Excuse me, yeah. agree. Act of God. That's an act of God. I saw it through the window. Go See, on. I associate most things with God. Oh, this gets weird. How powerful do you have to be to create a universe? I like to think of a supreme being. Yeah, here she is. Oh, good old Anita. Ah, oh, damn it. Wait, really? I'm a natural person to write about a voyeur because I'm All a right, voyeur that, myself. That I think they come back to her more. I don't know why I have well, this is Maybe because it was the, the picture of her. This is yeah. the story of, of... It's what it is. This is the story of Gay Talese now. Letting you know that he's... But I want you to understand the kind of jag this dude is. So, Bria, yeah, bring his, this up. His deep cover exposés, which, by the way, I get it. I'm not judging him for doing it. I'm judging him for being so noble about it. Yeah. I don't think people are noble about something that you clearly... You're, you're, thing was to go fuck a bunch of young confused chicks for a while he joined like a sex cult 
Yeah, he joined us in with a sex cult. So, so we could write an article about a sex cult, and you're like, all right, dude. Like, yeah. He's like, he's like, I immersed myself. I had sex with all of the women. And they interview, and his, blah, blah, like, they oh, interview his wife, and his wife's me. like, yeah, it sucked. My husband was off, like, fucking, and he's like, I, he definitely tries to make it look the same way that Gerald. I'm working. That's exactly. Yes. The same way that Gerald tries to make it like, I'm doing this thing. I'm, I'm out in, you know, like. I'm I'm watching. Gerald does that with like it's not perverted. It's actually scientific. Is the same way that Gay Talese is like I'm a reporter. I had to fuck those women. I can't just write about it. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're a fucking pervert. Shut the fuck up. You're a pervert. Go to so 11, it's tough, 11, but I know if he needs to have if he needs to have a, the real story and get so the nitty gritty so of he has to fuck all these chicks. Go back to about ten minutes because this is it right here. Uh, here, uh, look, go to ten yeah. minute even, and then this is it right here. This is the story of his book. You know the jokes you're going to have to face as you start the talk show rounds. Starting right here. I became a resident writer in a sexually free society. We got to have sex with other people. How did it affect your sexual life at home? Was it dissolved? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Big man. My wife is very unhappy. Uh, as you can imagine, we have daughters and we're you know known in our trying community. to fuck them like like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> everybody gets on my motherfucking house <laughs> thing. say hello to nan talese mrs talese phil donahue what i really minded was the press about it i was that gay he was just fucking everything he was hung like a like a woods donkey, like a field donkey. I said to get come out of the day is it's easier to, to pull a bug out of a hose. <laughs> you, you gotta get a real gust going. <laughs> Sometimes Gay would say, I, I'm gonna go off to this society and have sex with all these people. I said, well, you better write about it. <laughs> this better be for an article, Gay. Gay? Whatever weird shit Gay's doing, he's just always is like, it's for an article. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do weird shit. Hey, I'm going to go do coke with my friends and go to a strip club all night. She goes, well, you're just going to go to a strip club and do coke with your friends. Gay? Like, it's for an article. I got to fuck that lady I work with because I'm doing this whole <laughs> new article on like why men fuck co-workers that they're not into. She goes, hey, gay, a girl just called and said you <laughs> fucked her and got her pregnant. He goes, what is that all about? He goes, you want me to tell you now or you want to read the article? <laughs> What's going on? You want me to spoil for you? You want to read the article? Goes, oh, God, I'd love to go to your sister's. i got to take a nap and play two hours of Madden. <laughs> this article. <laughs> this is the article I'm doing. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to need you to leave me alone on Monday nights. I'm thinking about fucking your sister. Yeah, let's do a thing about the <laughs> duality of fucking sisters. Do they naturally have similar traits? Hmm. It's going to be an article. <laughs> I'm just too Babe, hard. the article. Stop getting in the way of my journalistic integrity. <laughs> All right, so now jump to 1150, where uh, he does a little voyeuring himself. Gay does. Gay to lease. He said, okay, I'll take you up through the utility room. So it shows how he goes up You go there. up the ladder, and you get to a landing. You go back, and there's a locked door. That's like being door John Malkovich. And only he had yeah. the key. We went inside. He then locked the door behind me. see light coming up from certain spots. And they do a really good job of kind of showing how it was modeled and the way they filmed it. By the it. way, I'm hanging out with this dude. I'm like jackpot, by the way. I'm sure, all about yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to say, Jay, this is like a thing where if, this, if Gerald was more like me and I'm all like, hey, do you want to play Madden and then go watch people bang up in my fucking I own a motel? Like, oh, my God. Wait, yeah, it's like Are you kidding me? Trip. I used to work <laughs> a horrific comedy club in New York City because right, you could watch girls take a piss from outside. I used to hang out with you and smoke cigarettes while... <laughs> I'm not admitting it's that. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. But listen, this is... I don't, I don't feel bad about that. It was to the window, to the street. To the wall! Uh, well, I have no idea why people would go in that stall. Well, uh, this is Gay Talese's story about when he starts watching for the first time with Gerald Feast. <laughs> he went and watched people. He was, yeah. Right here. <laughs> he leaned over one spot where there was light. And he pointed down, and we looked upon a very good-looking couple engaged in oral sex. Oh, boy. Hubba, hubba. He made a kind of 
sign like that. Dude, that's how I know he's a creep. I Pause it right there. By the way, I love Kate, that, though. Kate Elise, Kate Elise, I know you can't see it, but he goes, he made a sign like this, and he just does an enthusiastic thumbs up, and Dude. you're like, of course, Gerald Foose is a creep. If someone's getting blown, and he looks at uh, you, and he goes, ah, totally <laughs> fucking get it. Yeah, this one's hot to try. If I saw if I saw a guy getting blown by a chick, I would give a thumbs up to Christine like that. Mm-hmm. I would be like, right, look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> so here it is. Here's the rest of the story. I'm closer, watching intently. Just getting neck. And then I felt a man's hand on my neck. And I was, and sucking was the lawyer who crawled around and pulled me up, very quietly but firmly. I looked at him. And that damn tie of mine, my red silk tie, was only like a couple of feet from the head of the woman giving a blowjob to this guy on his bed. Jesus. He said, you have to be careful with that tie. Wow, that's a heavy bass. So yeah, so that's the story of he, this lady was given a blowjob and Gay Talese watched and his tie got close to touching her head as she was sucking dick. Which makes me think he has the longest tie of all time or that woman was yeah. standing up and that guy was, was standing 69. Yeah, the, guy, the, the guy was hanging from the fucking, yeah. uh, from the sprinkler system. Yeah, he's gone. And she was sucking his dick while bouncing on the bed. <laughs> and all in his tie, but yes, it was only a few inches from her head. He goes, did you have a clownishly long tie? Yeah, I wore my fruit by the foot roll. <laughs> Uh, it turns out my tie was only inches from her head. I wear a hilariously long tie. Go to 1657. Um, yeah, it's what's funny about that is it really, it, again, Gerald reflects, or Gay reflects Gerald so much because there's so many times where Gerald tells, tells stories in this movie that are built up where you're like... Well, it doesn't really make sense, that jump. It, like, that's gay, too, sometimes, where he's like, oh, yeah. my tie was... Feet above her head. You're like, well, how many feet? Ten feet? Five feet? Three no. feet? They're both just wealthy and non-wealthy of the same hunk of shit. Yeah. So this next one By is... By the way, I, well, and the reason I, I call him a hunk of shit, but wait, Gerald Foose, I swear to you, if he was my uncle when I was a kid, yeah. and he let me in on the fucking deal... I would have been up there every day for hours <laughs> upon hours upon hours. <laughs> However, it'd, it'd just be great to see little Jay with a backpack full of candy and then like and Kleenex, and you go, "Hi, Uncle Gerald," and you go, "Hey, Jason," you're going up to your perch. Hey, you gonna go look through the windows? <laughs> goes, the windows. The windows. <laughs> uh, he goes, "Oh, you're going to the lavatory. Your lavatory. Your lavatory." Uh, la- um, so this is like a Hannibal Lecter. Um, but no, I'm saying I would go up there constantly and do uh, I. Love the idea. I would go up there today. Where I have a weird thing is one being going the distance of like creating the scenario to yeah. peek on people, not happening upon it, but but making it uh, making so it happen, like making it so. And then uh the other creep thing about him trying he defends it is like it's not something that's like a piece of shit thing to do. Well, like that's what I kind of hate about it. Like, I, like he's he's not like, he tries to spin everything to be like you know well I was doing. You know, it's it's my thing. It's well. It's here's where in me and here's where you're lucky you're not in his family because if you were, he'd probably try to want to fuck you. And by that, I mean you're gonna find out why he got into voyeurism, and you're also gonna find out that he says "winda" a lot in oh, this yeah. next scene. Oh. Ah, hey, town! <laughs> God, it's so flat and boring. <laughs> tell me how it was you first started as a voyeur. I was on a farm with my mother and father. Uh, East of Alt, Colorado. We lived uh, right Where's straight that across. Shit? Uh, oh, you mean where my grandfather's from? Yeah. <laughs> that is right We're now, watching this and my mom goes, your grandfather's from Alt, Colorado. I go, what's that? <laughs> she goes, yeah, he had a ranch out in Alt, Colorado. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> is there any chance that the, the Foos name could be kicking around on your side? Damn it, Trish, you got a heavy Dan, chest. Dan, I hate to tell you, we are half Foos. <laughs> She goes, oh, well, I'm only a little bit of foos on my father's side. I go, no! Dan, it's okay. You are two generations removed foos. <laughs> you are moose foos. A moose foos. A moose foos. A moose foos. You're a moose foos. <laughs> foos. <laughs> oh, we're getting slap happy. But let's keep going. Alt Colorado. Big up. Across the street. Dick Miller. My mother's sister, Catherine Eckhart. Oh, Catherine she was Eckhart. younger and she was different in the body type. And she had freckles. Mm. 
That was true. I never really knew what freckles were in those days. But I called them I the to... devil's kisses. I didn't know. <laughs> Usually, if a woman had freckles, we thought she was a witch, and we threw her in the well. I used to call her shit sprinkles because yeah. I was an uneducated man. I thought so somehow talks. shit just had <laughs> soaked into her skin. She had freckles, and that made me want to look at her pubic hair, and that's when I pulled my penis out. I what? showed it to her. Watch it get some out there find out she was a, i gathered a very attractive woman she was beautiful all right Jerry. in other words from my eyes the most beautiful woman that i ever laid eyes on freckles right? <laughs> i think i had gone to bed approximately nine o'clock in the evening even as i sat there on the bed suddenly i got this urge what urge to jerk went off to the window and i looked out across the street and it was like a compelling force I could see right straight to my Aunt Catherine's bedroom window. A mysterious force <laughs> captivated window. my entire body. Window. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not a dancer. It's a duh. It's a window. It's not a winders. <laughs> That's a dancer. Window. Window. Wind a window. Take like a throw at the yeah. window. Window. And now what beckoned to me was the window. <laughs> oh, that's good. The beckoning I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's that. good. Oh, that's really good stuff right there. Oh, it's, it's just gay to least in a fucking sad hotel lobby. On oh, that's the stuff. Are we gonna fuck? What are we doing? Are we gonna fuck? We gonna do drugs? Mm. What's this article about, man? Uh, what are we gonna do? So this is where you start. You, know, you don't understand. Gay. You don't understand, Foos. I can make the article about fucking anything, man. <laughs> Foos, I can, we can do anything we want and just call it the article. He goes, do you understand? I can bend time and space <laughs> for the article. You want to get some more girls over here? We can kill them. We want to party the article. I got an expense account. <laughs> I can make anything happen. I work for the New Yorker. We're articling. I'm above. The, I am the law. He <laughs> quotes Judge Dredd. I am the law. Let's take. Uh, let's take our first break because I think we've gone. How long have we gone? Forever. Forty-five. 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 We're gonna clear for our uh, first break of the evening. It's the bonfire. It's a special voyeur episode. We'll be right back. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. A real time. And then I look out the window. I'm just a voyeur. It's the bonfire. The The bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. And this is a Lost Tapes. What the fuck? I mean... He was horrible. Oh, terrible. It was clearly Barry Gordon's nephew. You talk about the Barry song. Gordy. Yeah. Barry Gordy. Yeah. Barry Gordy's nephew. What did I say? Gordon? Rockwell. Yeah. Uh, his nephew. His nephew. Uh, Rockwell. I mean, just talentless. Yeah, it really But is. he got Michael Jackson to sing that hook, and it's the whole thing. Yeah. It's the whole thing. I bet there's, I bet there's a lot of people out there that think it's just a Michael Jackson song. Yep. And just what? Think he paid like a studio guy to sing that part? Like just to do the other part. Now it's kind of like it's you know, definitely not Michael Jackson. Like you know, who's watching me now? No, no, no. But I'm saying like, like stupid people that just hear it on the radio. They're like, yeah, what's the Michael Jackson song? He goes, I always. Feel oh yeah, yeah. It could catch you like that. Sure. Yeah, it feels like it could be a Michael Jackson featuring. Yeah, absolutely. Where he's like, I'm scared and I'm alone and I lock the door. <laughs> I'm doing a haunted house song. Play the lyrics, Lou. It really is like. Michael Jackson on this song is like Bill Murray in Kingpin. Like, when it, when he's in it, you're like, this is the best thing ever. Just and then he's gone, himself. and then you're like, that's all right. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, Bill Murray really lends himself to that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is Michael Jackson lending him. I mean, this is a cash-in of a big favor, man. I don't know what it is, but oh, it's when you a need cash him. off of a big, big favor. It's definitely Barry going... Michael, Barry Gordy, listen, my nephew has a song, and please, we need this for the Gordy family. <laughs> His name's Rockwell. He's talentless. Michael, if you could just call him so Rockwell, he's a buffoon. Or if you call him, ah, my sister's kid needs this fucking hit. He's a bit of a buffoon. A bit of a buffoon. Well, speaking I'm of buffoons. I'm making Barry Gordy an ascot wearing white man. I love it. Uh, Michael, it's Barry Gordy. You've lost your blackness, Barry. That's I know you I have. Well, don't yeah. worry. I know, Michael. I'll make the last dragon and everything will be okay. It will reverse the curse. Um, we're watching The Voy- or well, not The Voyeur. Voyeur on Netflix. A documentary about Gerald Foose and Gay Talese writing a book about him. Dan's hometown. And they, they all takes place, well, it takes place in New York City, but also in Aurora, Colorado. 
Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is um we're back to a part where Gay Talese and uh Gerald Foos are in the lobby of the hotel. And this is where you kind of start to see Gerald's ego. And you see how Gay pumps him up because he's like, yeah, you're crazy. You're insane. And Gerald's like, yeah, they're going to want to write about me. And Anita just hiding those blouse hounds in a sweatshirt. Anita <laughs> Anita oh, looks Anita. like fucking uh, Louis Anderson in baskets. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. She really does look like he's a like, fucking... look like a guy, like a, like a slap happy, like old Jewish comedian guy. He goes, like a guy. What are we it, doing it now? It legitimately looks like a kids in the hall character. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like Scott Thompson could play it. Yeah, she like, yeah. are you are, like, are you half clown? Yeah. Like, she looks like she was born half clown. Her that, face looks ridiculous. She goes, "Well, Gerald, because I got a rack. <laughs> if you didn't know, Titty fucking's an Aurora thing. He calls them yimbos. I don't even know what that means. I said that they're my bags of pudding. <laughs> oh, you want to touch my pudding bags, Gerald? Do you want to watch me take a shower first? You want to watch me poop? Oh, I, can, I love when I get to Anita so we can nail her voice. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a minute. I forget what she sounds like at all. But her face... She always she's gonna talk like fucking. Wow, wow. He's Jerry Lewis. Wow, hello, lady. Wow. Ga, 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 ga. This guy's looking through the ceiling. Like Can you believe gone. it? Wow, God. He likes looking at the waiters going the hoo ha's and the and wow. we with the suitcases and the. She's got Rip Taylor face. Ah. All right, here we go. I finally got to the window. Window. You know, in those days, windows was different. Down, there was a, a mirror. Never. Now I could look from here into that mirror and see what everything she was doing in the room. She had beautiful red hair at that time. Her pubic region was red. very red, and she had big boobs. All right. Oh, which became the reason that I have had a fixation on boobs. Well, you gotta wait. Yeah, yeah, look at Anita signing off on that. Like, yeah, that's why he brought me in. She's like, true that. <laughs> oh, I had to bring in my boulder busters. <laughs> For him, Gerald loves my little bum, my big old boobies. Uh, it's weird because it's, it's funny how Gerald. Suffocate this fat asshole with these old things. <laughs> I go watch this. I'm gonna make so many watch this references. Uh, hello, Anita. Va, 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 boom. <laughs> hey, boys, look at my ruffle dust. Uh, but it's funny how Gerald Foose goes from trying to be like professional about it to back to being a creep. He goes, well, her pubic region had red hair and then her boobs. And you're like, all right. That's buddy. why I'm a boobs guy. I Windows really, and boobs. I look through the window and I go, let me put my face in the <laughs> Oh, perfect, Jay. Perfect, Jay. God damn it, Jay nailed it with Louie Anderson for baskets at the bonfire SXM on Twitter. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Louie Anderson for baskets should yeah. play Anita oh, in the story of the this. The Gerald Foose story? The Foose story. Can you play Foose? Yeah, I bet we can get Lifetime to make it. Dude. <laughs> if you don't if think we promise them what we'll do, the backup we'll give them that we gave to the two Corys movie. My question is... We had to drive more traffic to that movie than probably anything go, in the Guys, world. we got a hit! Uh, do you think anyone at the Lifetime office listens to Bonfire and then, like, listens to our show, listens to the Bonfire and, like, pass it around the office? Like, dude, these guys... Someone in well, the chain. Well, if they chain. do, let us make the Gerald Foose movie and let Jay and I executive produce it. Please. Please. I'll make it. I'll, I'll play Gerald Foose. Dan will play Guy to Gay Talese. Oh, I'd love to play Gay Talese. And we just got to get a little bit of a budget because we're going to have to get Louis Anderson to come yeah. out. Louis our big build, all right? Play. Out, outside the Foose and Gay? I mean, We got to draw him away from Baskets, which has been relatively successful. But ask him if he could also steal the wig because it's perfect. <laughs> also snag the wigs. We don't have a lot of wig budget yeah. after what we're paying him to pull him from Baskets. Listen, to break you out of FX... <laughs> It's BYOW. So I guess what I'm saying is if I gotta throw you a budget, mill an episode. Yeah, we don't know what we can do. Oh, the Gerald, oh, we're gonna make it a show? <laughs> an, eight, an eight episode? Oh yeah, this, you don't get away with this in two hours. Oh, voyeur? Oh yeah. This woman is the obsession of your masturbatory dreams. You know, they're gonna say, it's amazing. The voyeur started out like that? Is that what caused, see, psychologists wow. are gonna be. See right so, here, so, so, we're, we're rewinding yeah, a little sure. bit, cause we gotta get through the sentence where he goes, psychologists are gonna be. He really like sucks his own dick right here, watch. I, I don't know, I don't know if that, 
there's got to be other words to describe no, that. No, beckoning window is perfect. Yeah. You're a no, poet. No, you don't but, even know you're a poet. But, you're but a poet. You, uh, but you, uh, beckoning you, window. You'll come up with other words. No, I don't have to come up with any That's the best word. I'm about. Beckoning window, right? Window. Anita, what do you think? Good word, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. I got to the window. You know, in those days... Nobody pulled shades down. <laughs> I didn't know. know that. That's true. There was a, a mirror. A okay. mirror. Jacket. Now, I could look from here into that mirror and see what everything she was doing in the room. She had beautiful red hair at that time. Her pubic region was... Pubic region? Red. Very red. And she red. Had red. red. boobs. Oh, which God. became the reason that I have had a fixation on boobs. No question about it. This is where you Turn going that, motherfucker. Uh -huh. This woman. Preach. All right, here it is. You know, they're going to say, it's amazing. The voyeur started out like that? Is that what caused... See, psychiatrists are going to be... Scratching their head. Right You're going to be famous in all the medical journals. Steady. You want to talk to me. Yeah, See, he's like pumping him. him up. Gate please feeds him, but I'm saying, like, anyone... T he talks about himself like he's the character. Like... The voyeur is going to be studied by. Yeah, and he goes. Like, Don't you understand? That's the, what a great backstory. Bruce Wayne's parents were murdered. The voyeur's backstory was his aunt had some fucking giant tits, and he jerked off to him looking through a window. Yeah, he really is like what a what a terrible. By the way, if the voyeur was a comic book hero, what a terrible backstory. Because he says like it's going to be a big deal. He goes, they're going to be like, that's how the voyeur started. It's like no, that makes complete sense on why the voyeur started. You're jerking off to your aunt through a window, dude. As a as a guy who loves jerking off to. Voyeur-esque <laughs> oh, voyeur nudity? No, I really thought you were going to have an ant fetish. I was hoping. No, but I'll tell you, what, I used to wear goggles and go into water and look at my stepmother's sister's uh, beef hairs out of the side of her <laughs> Out of the side of her bathing suit. Oh, the yeah, old spider big. legs. I yeah, I can hold my breath for 18 minutes. Yeah, go, <laughs> that's how much I wanted to see Bush. They go, guys, uh, Jay should either be a Navy SEAL or look into a sex therapist. <laughs> <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying, though, as like, uh, I don't not understand hanging out for two hours and staring at a girl walk around naked and do naked things. I get it. Yeah. Sucking dick and whatever. I fully get it. But I don't get one, the, building your life around it, one, is mm -hmm. hilarious to me. And two, um, Although, you know, do what you love and the money comes. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're basically paying him to let him watch them fuck around. Yeah. But... You'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> well, if you walked in there and you were just rainy, covered in rain, you're like, hey, can I get a room? And he was like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you like, know. What are you going to do? Yeah, I go, I was just going to I don't know, man. I was just going to nap in a shower. He goes, we're all booked. <laughs> what? I go, oh, man, I was supposed to meet this girl. He goes, ah, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me see a picture of her. <laughs> <laughs> the, like, they should do a Netflix show of the stumbling years. <laughs> but he's not good at great. He's like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. What does she look like? <laughs> Why, sir? Why would that matter? He goes, uh, I'm just saying these beds got a weight limit. What I'm saying, what, uh, I don't want you to, goes, uh, I don't want yeah. you to break my box springs. He goes, you guys sexually active? No, man, she's 16 long and lean. He's like, oh, yeah, all right, okay, okay. Right, back in, uh, we might have a room for you. We might have the best room for you. I might have a room right now for you. He goes, he's just uh, looking at him through the, the frame fingers and going like, I think I'm going to put you in room. He knows his perspectives from room to room. I'm going to put you in room time out. seven. He goes, time out. Are you left-handed or right-handed? He goes, left-handed. He goes, 12. Well, I'll put you in 12. I'll put you in 12. <laughs> you know what? Let me auto-correct that. I'm put that in 12. You swing right or left? Dude. I don't know what you mean, sir. Do you swing right or left? Yeah. Hey, right? He goes, okay, this is room 12. <laughs> Well, the way he's talking about himself, like the Voyeur's a superhero. That's what I mean. It he's really talking, could again, be. Again, I would. I it would could be a Netflix Marvel show oh, called yeah. The Voyeur. I would look at everything he's looked at. I would look. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't one think it's noble. Yeah. I don't think anyone should be like regaled by the fucking stories. It's just like I don't know, dude. Like if you like look through this window, if you're like you have nothing to do right now, and you like look through this window for a while, it goes. 20% chance a girl's going to walk by full muff out. I'd be like, ah, that's great. Yeah. Well, go to 2117. And when you go to... Does that happen right there? Uh, it just This is where it gets to the point where it's... it's um, It starts getting into a sex chart. There's a little sex here. Every once in a while, you get a summary like this. So a sex chart. sex without intercourse. Five. Pause it. Intercourse only. 20. If you can go back to that chart so we can read it there right there. So he has a self-made chart with types of sex acts performances. It's oral sex with... with I, I, I can read it. Uh, uh, 
oral sex with or without intercourse. Uh, with inter, yeah. With or without inner, um. And by the way, look at these things, like the things on the side you can't really see fully. Do you get somewhere he moves his finger? Like the graph chart, the top things, like the top of the chart, is oral sex with or without intercourse, intercourse only, masturbate masturbation only. only, uh, something in, <laughs> I love the bell noise. Is that pulsating? <laughs> Oh, oh, resulting in male orgasm, resulting in female <laughs> orgasm, or no sex. The and then make, moving down. The bell's really making me laugh. Right. The bell's making the whole thing for you. I thought we were in a hotel here. Yeah, and, uh, I love it. And then, and then down the side, it's like <laughs> homosexual male. Yeah. It's all, by the way, blank zero. A Asian or whatever. Dude, that's, you know what's, I mean, we were just joking around about that, but I'm sure if like a gay couple came in and they're like, hi, so we were just wondering if we get a room. He goes, sorry, sold out. Can't cornhole in my place. Yeah, I got. You know he hates the sheets. That story's coming up when oh, you dust yeah. up his fucking thing. So he has an entire document called the Voyeur Journals, <laughs> which are things that he's written down about people. And this is initially what he contacted Gay Talisa about. Like after I took calligraphy classes, I decided to write the Voyeur Journal. He, goes, he seems you, like that jerk off. A lot of writing in the dark, uh, <laughs> but you know you learn your eyes adjust like a bat. I write through sonar. I could hear the pen hitting the page. So he does the whole voyeur journals where he documents all these people, the people that came in, and it leads to a lot of different stories and a couple of stories, you know, we're going to start off first, obviously, with the sex stuff, so. It's so completely fascinating, full of strange, weird details. It's an amazing snapshot of the American condition that is interesting and newsworthy in itself. In 1980, he promised that he would show me the 1980 many pages that he had accumulated on yellow line legal size pads. Approximately 35 years old, white male, 5'10, 180, white collar. Wife, 35, 5'4, plump. <laughs> Gay police hair. dresses like a Commodore. Yeah. Uh, he's in the Commodore. He goes, We must need limes. But what's funny is looking at uh, Oh, I said I'd like a Commodore like a ship leader. That's what I thought you were talking about. Oh, no. About. I mean, like the Commodores. Yeah. Like the, singer, like the band. That's really funny. I was like, mm, I Lady, <laughs> you build me up yeah. and I'm down. But also, some of this stuff, he says, approximately 35 year old white male employed at NORAD in Denver. On business. On business. 5'10", 180, white collar, probably college educated, wife 35 years old, 5'4", 130 pounds. That's, you know, so that's a little heavy. Pump. It's a little heavy for 5'4". Yeah, pleasingly pump. Pleasingly pump. Uh, yeah, all right, Gerald. Unknown female companion, 30-year-old black male, employment unknown. There's a little sex here. Every once in a while, you get a summary like this. Oral sex without intercourse, five. Intercourse only, 29. Masturbation only one. Resulting male orgasm, 35. Resulting female orgasm, seven. So it shows you how women don't have that much fun. Oh, yeah. All right. In motel fucking, I believe that's probably true. Yeah, that does, that's like playing at Pittsburgh. You're only going to get a couple wins. <laughs> it's a tough place to go and play. It's a tough place for a woman. If you're on the woman, you know, that's a road game. You're fucking in a motel. He had his own. Number rating? Well, he would do like, what's weird is that he would. How did a guy get a 29? No, no, it would be 29 orgasms. It's numbers of times. Number of times he came. So the guy came 35 times, just like a fire hose. <laughs> and the woman had seven. Yeah. She's only got a good kicker. The guy's fired <laughs> off. Solid D, good D. He's like, bah! 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 And meanwhile, Jared Foose goes, that's a one. I get Luke and hit the fucking bell every 10 seconds for the rest of the show would make me happy. <laughs> Just the fact that it's a motel is just nonstop. Like, where is this guy? <laughs> he's perfect. fucking, he's up eating pizza and watching people jerk off. Well, they, this is great because this is where it starts to uh, keep hitting play. You had watched, perhaps. Second, I'm sorry. Also, I'll tell you another reason I hate gay Talise. They, never, they glaze over it, but all of his yeah, I know exactly the boxes what that he keeps all of his files in. He has to like artistically like oh. paper mache make like uh like a kidnap collages letter. out of them. Like like the box itself has to be like this. You know, it looks like the Sex Pistols logo almost. Yeah. Like everything's like it's just. Stupid. Well, that's what I said. It looks like a kidnap letter. Yeah. It's all cut oh, out what letters. A jag off. And he goes, hold on, my box isn't ready. He's fucking. He's the last. He's the last human being that has. I had to buy fucking liquid paper. Yeah, he goes, I have to do my arts and crafts if I'm going to write this article. 
He sprays liquid paper on it. He goes, gay, me and the dog, me and the girls wanted to go get dinner. He goes, I'm jacking off and I'm huffing glue. For an article. <laughs> it's an article. But I gotta do the liquid paper so I can put it on this. Leave me if you must. It's an article. Thousand, three thousand people a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Putting in a lot of time, too. Oh, till, till daylight. Donna used to come up and bring me like a Coke. Yeah. Sometimes even bring me a sandwich. Right. Because she knew I was up there. I said, poor old Gerald, he's up there and he hasn't eaten. Yeah, like you that, know? that. That's exactly what I'm talking about, where he tries to play it like it's like, you're not doing an honorable thing. You're jacking off the stranger. He either, and I'm, this is a bold statement, but he either beats the shit out of these chicks <laughs> or <laughs> or these girls come from a place he's where they were beaten so bad that he, that they're just like, this guy's not hitting me. At least he's, he's fine. <laughs> you know what? It's not zero degrees outside. Yeah. Like, how do you live in Seattle? They go, it's not if snow. you fuck Gerald Foose, you're bright siding life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the fact that he's a voyeur is a relaxating thing. It's like a, it's oh, a thing yeah. that eases you. He goes, I watch people fuck. She goes, I think you're going to tell me you kill people. <laughs> she goes, yeah, cool. I don't oh, is that all? He's uh, like, yeah, so I'm not going to be around a lot. I spend a lot of my time up in this crawl space. She goes, fantastic. <laughs> Do you have cable here? I'll yeah. move in tonight. She goes, this is a really good first date. Sure is. My name's Anita. Yeah, she goes, you need anything? She what goes, do you want me to do? Just bring you sandwiches every once in a while? She goes, you like big tits and chicks that leave you alone? Done and done. <laughs> done and done. Because <laughs> this sounds like you're just Could have been the dish. <laughs> Could have been the dish. Oh, dude, I would have loved to have fucked around in a motel. Hey, Mr. Gerald, can I go upstairs in your crawl space? And I'm like, oh, can I have my G.I. Joes come through the vents and scare them? No. What do you want Trish, your dumb big-headed kid got me caught. Trish, your dumb water heads up there playing. What are you, you a, a, little, a little gun fell through the vent. Hit a woman in the head. She was, she was giving a beach. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me walking over the fence and falling through. You don't realize you have to stay on the catwalk. And he goes, no, 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 no. And it's just me going, hey, Mr. Gerald, I'm walking over these. Ah! And it's going to a room. Uh, I like a G.I. Joe gun falling through the vents. He goes, that, he goes, oh my god, a green bazooka just hit your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Who's looking up? Is somebody in the vent up there? Well, I think we're almost getting close to Shut it. Shut up, Dan. Yeah. Uh, what? what? Perhaps between 2,000 and 3,000 people a letter run. year. Mm-hmm. He really puts Putting in the man in a lot hours. Of time, too. Oh, till, till oh. daylight. Oh. oh, I mean, I'm jacking in a giant. He used to come up and bring me like a Coke. Yeah. Sometimes he even bring me a sandwich. I think you're absolutely right. He because shit he out was up there said, poor old Gerald, he's up there and he hasn't eaten. You know, you can only masturbate, uh, how many times? A couple times a night? When you're younger, you can do it three, four, maybe five. Jesus. Ooh. I got interested in certain people. I mean, he just, right there, so he tries to act like this is all medicinal, uh, or like, yeah. that it's medical or scientific, became, and then he's like... I became intrigued by people, and I wanted to explore further. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like you're just watching them fuck. Well, also, he just said it. He goes... When you're young, you jerk off three, four times a night. And he's talking about, like, I was up there all night. It's like, yeah, you're up there jerking off like a weird person. Like a fucking like, he's like, perverted he's like, raccoon. He's like, I can only jerk off like twice a night, but I'd sit there for hours. Like, it's like, I know, but you're feeding the same thing. Yeah, like, by the way, off. you're just waiting for your balls to fill back yeah, up. Yeah, that's it. And then you go like this. And then she gets up and, like, puts lotion on her lower back, and you go... I'm going to jerk it again. <laughs> like, it'd be great to see the moment where, where Gerald starts getting going again, where she turns on the TV and he's like, yep, I'm back. Hey, sorry, big guy, but time to roll again. And then Nita's up there. She's like, you want a cook? And he goes, get out of here. I'm about to jerk it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's fucking hilarious. He can't say anything. <laughs> Gerald, do you want me to bring you up a sub-hero? Oh, uh, yes. You want a meatball or a ham? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I being loud? Can they hear? I didn't know you were about to jerk. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I made some cream of potato soup. Oh, the light was green, not red. Red means you're jacking. All right, I may have forgot to do the light. I'm sitting here in the window. Window. And uh, when yeah. you're young, man, you can go four, five, six, seventeen times a night. And you're like, but oh, when my you God. have the window. Yeah. Which I could. I gave him yeah. full rates. One time, he was watching a couple that were very attractive. Yeah. 22 and 25-year-old. He said, never wasted a woman. 
Mm. Gerald's getting into it. About to fuck. I'm looking forward with much anticipation toward a really a good show of of, of sex. All right. Game well, police. good writing. Just as they're about to take off their clothes, the guy turned off the lights. Yep. That's the old Dan Soder playbook. Television set. And the voyeur is more than disappointed. He's angry. He's angry. They they betrayed his anticipation. What does he do? I went down the ladder and got in my car. He puts on the bright... And this is a lie. Parks it right outside the window. Then he goes upstairs. Now he can see them. I mean, it's a lie. No, he didn't. If you did that, if he did that, Come then on. he Hold on, here's the end of it. Right here. Sorry. He's the lights blazing through the drawn curtains. And he says, some dumb bastard left his lights on... And he goes, some dumb bastards jerking off to you and your girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what he's trying to say. He goes, they thought, like, some dumb bastards. goes, literally, no, so I could watch them fuck. He goes, yeah, you're still the loser here, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah. He goes, yeah. yeah, so I could watch you fuck a hot chick while I beat it in a fucking yeah. weird wooden uh, crawl space. By the way. While my fat tin pretty, orc wife's going to fucking bring me up a goddamn <laughs> sardine and cream cheese sandwich. Pretty sure I'm going to get some sort of mesothelioma. I eat old weird shit. He goes, probably going to get some sort of mesothelioma from all this insulation. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's when I caught asbestosis. <laughs> by the way, his hair goes from jet black to stark white by oh, the man. end of this documentary. It's like him breathing in all that fiberglass. <laughs> yeah, no, like, you know, they really fist false bill of goods with that Pink Panther endorsement. <laughs> Turns out that stuff's pretty rough on your lungs. He goes, every time I take a breath, it's like a York peppermint patty is being crushed. <laughs> it's like someone broke a light bulb over my lungs. You ever used to have uh, fights with, like, uh, neon bulbs, you know? Or the, what are those ones called? Those uh, Fluorescent. Fluorescent, where you whack it? I go, That's me on a cold day. Every breath. <laughs> you see that fiberglass sort of you know, uh, shatters in the we're, cold. We're, we're going to East Coast with this accent. Yeah, I go, I was up there looking at their uh, pubic regions. And now every time I breathe, well, Window. it's hell. It's in the window. Sometimes I just cough up blood for hours. And Nina, <laughs> God bless her, just has to mop it up with her big fat tits. I thought I was hoping for tuberculosis because it's curable now, but nope. Just sucking in Tyvek. <laughs> it's kind of like God's... Breathing house rap. Feels like God's watching me suffer. That's him being a voyeur. Looking through his window. Ah, uh, God right now is looking through his little air conditioning greatness guy. <laughs> a lot of people say God's a voyeur. <laughs> the ultimate. This is clearly, Dan, uh... Two episodes? Yeah, more than that one episode. Dude, and I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. We thought we were going to get through this, like, quick. Yeah, I mean, we are not far into this thing. <laughs> Here's the deal, though. This is what happens on Evergreen and, and Lost Tape episodes. It's just one subject. So if you wanted to go back to us talking normal shit, just Wednesday through Monday through Wednesday. Thursday, yeah. Thursdays. That's for us. <laughs> this, is for, this is the B-sides. It's the bonfire. Lost tapes. We're doing the voyeur all day. Well, we're watching the voyeur. Who watches? Who watches the voyeur? Who watches who? And you watch me, and then I watch, I watch them. You. And I'm going to watch you. We'll be right back, and you can come back and watch us at the bonfire. Don't shut your window. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. On fire with a little bit of private eyes from Hollow Notes. You're watching, you watching, you get it? Does everybody get it? Guys, <laughs> we're on brand. <laughs> we're doing what? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Uh, I'm Dan Soda. That's Big J. Okerson. This is the Bonfire Conversation Radio. Pete Wentz? Is that Pete Wentz that way? Yeah. He always plays it. You don't know that? I always think it's Corey Feldman for some reason. No. <laughs> that's Corey Feldman. Right. That's the, I'm the best dancer. Uh, that's the best. <laughs> we all know when it comes to dancing, you think of one name, Pete Wentz. Because there's literally nobody more synonymous with dance than Pete Wentz. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, even what? listening to that is rough because oh, you watch man. the video, you see the oh god, oh, it's stinky. Uh, so back to that's Voyeur. Great, by the way, that's a great. Can you take a picture of that? Of that frightened squirrel, guys, gay to lease. My nuts. <laughs> My story. It's for the article. <laughs> it's always for the article. <laughs> article. 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 <laughs> article. Article. <laughs> Look at his bushy tail. Ooh, article. Uh, <laughs> Is that good audio? Uh, squirrel mouth. Um, back to Voyeur on Netflix about Gay Talese and his subject, Gerald Foos, uh, taking place in Aurora, Colorado. The 5280. 80013 One time he was in the office and the cleaning lady say listen there must be a sheep in one of those rooms because all I hear is bow bow and so he goes up in the ladder and he sees two men one of them dressed in sheep's clothing and the other guy is on top of him having yeah. sex and he's making these sheep sounds <laughs> Oh, is that guy watching this? Oh, you want to check in the you want to check in the village manor and just go ham on my shitter while I wear a, 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 while I wear a sheep costume? Hey, I got a real sick idea. I you want to go start, buck on my butthole? He goes, how about I go down to Colfax and Peoria and get us a room at the manor house? <laughs> yeah, I'll dress like a sheep. Oh, oh, you want to be a little sheep? Huh? Oh, oh, I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have you biting at a fence like it's the fucking. Front of uh, God damn it! What's the Pearl Jam album with the sheep on the front? Versus, versus. I want to, yeah. I want to say Vitology. You know, I know that's just. Christine, that. you're letting this roll. You know that, right? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> right. Ooh, stinky. Dressed in sheep's clothing, and the other guy is on top of him, just poofing. Sex. And he's making these just sheep sounds. wailing on his ass. I mean, I had an individual come into my motel, <laughs> had a bucket of chicken. From uh, the Colonel. By the way, where this story goes, He's so hateable. Where this story goes immediately when he says that, you're like, this guy's gonna fuck this bucket of chicken. And then where the story does go, you go, oh, what? He's gonna <laughs> fuck him some chicken. Yeah, like right when he's saying this, every time I've watched this documentary, crazy stories. There's two goat people butt fucking each other. He goes, no. Another guy eats chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you go, wait, what? So you know. I'm saying vast array of things can go down. <laughs> you're, right, uh, you're all over the map here, Foos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Foos, you watch it all, huh? <laughs> yeah, do the chicken story. I spent the better part of eight hours watching a young man eat an entire box of chicken. He goes, now, I have watched people dressed as goats fucking. I have watched brothers and sisters fuck. I am truly disgusted by this man's acts. How do you eat 12 pieces of chicken and you don't even buy potato wedges? <laughs> I'm up there and, uh, you know, I'm watching him eat. Oh, here, just hit play. Napkins. Set them over here on the side of the bed. And then proceeded to eat this chicken. Sometimes that made me hungry. And then, of course, his hands were... What did he do? He just reached down and picked up the bedspread like this. And he upstairs got so angry. He said, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. And he goes, who said that? And he went to the window, and he pulled back the drape, and he looks down this way, then he looks down that way, and nobody there. He was not discovered. Because I was jerking off to him eating chicken. <laughs> Whole time I was just smacking it to him watching that rip apart that breast. I didn't think it was that impressive, but then I wanted to masturbate to his chicken eating. He goes, now, now psychologists are going to flip about this, but I'm up there jerking it to him eating chicken. Um, I mean, yeah, but I guess, by, by the way, if anybody who owned a hotel has ever seen how loose I am with my jism in a hotel, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's on the sheets. Uh, it's yeah. happening. Uh, you're a, you're a mean man. I always try to self-contain, dude. Or do you really? Yeah. What really, do you do? What do you mean? Uh, try to hit yourself in the belly? No, I catch the bell, it. bell? Catch it all in the Kleenex. In the Kleenex. Fucking. I think it's in your hand, like you shoot it in the air and snatch it out of the air. <laughs> like how Mr. Perfect <laughs> yeah, used to spit his gum out. Slap. Mr. Perfect, my gum. He Mr. Perfect. Sweet. Just grab it out of the air like a bird trying uh, to fly away. Yeah. Not today, Tweety Bird. And I, yeah, then I toss the towel behind me. <laughs> slap the gum out there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so this is Gerald Foose's hatred of a specific animal. I try to write messages in jizz on the sheets and then people can read them with like a black light later. That's pretty cool. Get out. It's pretty adventurous. Yeah. 
And that's the one time he kind of lost his cool. The thing that used to anger me more than anything is dogs. I used to hate them. I used to hate them when they were in the rooms. I love it. The only time he ever spoke up was about a guy getting whatever on it, like like chicken on his sheets. Meanwhile, like, he didn't seem to have an issue. He didn't yell out when it's like, guys are sheep butt-fucking all over oh, his yeah. sheets. You know what He's the like, kind of spillage that kind of boofing has? Oh, my w- God. No matter fake what. Aggressive sheep-fucking? Even if you enemaed, yeah. there's some weird cruddy jizz he falling goes, out of your well, gaping asshole, well, which I'm sorry to use an industry term. Gaping asshole. <laughs> well, you see, that's those men are having sex, and I can understand that because I'm writing it down in my journal. But this... <laughs> Fat slob is eating chicken and he's writing it all over in the damn. It doesn't make any sense to me. I hate dogs. I love. I love the reason for this. Yeah, because because they know he's a creep. Oh yeah. Quiet as he is, not even hardly breathing. If he can help it, the dog sometimes would catch him. You sit there, look. He could he could hear anything. You know, that little sucker knew about it. There's some days I'd be real depressed because here's what happens. I'd go up there at night and I'd go from one room to the next. And the only thing I was hearing was shouting, hollering, complaining, cursing. All that kind of stuff really bothers me. By watching different people doing things that I didn't think was appropriate, I developed the distaste for a lot of people. He really became somewhat cynical. He wanted to entrap people. I mean, Weirdo. How fucking dare you? They ruined his view of humanity. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's also like... A peeping don't... Tom is upset because in closed doors, like, you finger your own butt when you jack off. He goes, I couldn't believe it. That's gay. Who yells the answers at Jeopardy at the TV? <laughs> Someone next door could be watching. It's like he answered every question right, but he never said who is or what is. Like, hey, Made me they, bananas. I'm looking through the window, and they tell you the damn rules of the show at the beginning. <laughs> who is? I mean, who doesn't know how to properly answer a question at Jeopardy? You phrase the question, he's the jer- answer in the form of a question. Pulls back, and Gerald's jerking off while he's explaining that. He goes, sorry. That four to five times a day used to be the old Gerald. I'm new Gerald. What's the morning? What's the night? <laughs> like heartburn medication. He comes up with a plan. Thing I started doing was planting uh, yep. dildos. <laughs> what a fucking planting the dildos! And it's usually in one of the bedside tables. This voyeur put porno magazines. I wanted to find out whether they'd utilize what I planted, or come up to the office and say, "Hey, clean your rooms out. Get your one of your mates." I had a couple women do that. I had a couple men do that. But the women that utilized it, what a creep! No, 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 it's crazy. not that. Here's what I'm saying. Gerald Foos, he's lying. lying. He's lying. What do you mean? I don't know, man. You'd have to be a next level crack hooker <laughs> to use a fucking dildo you found in a motel oh, Jay, drawer. Come on. Jay, come on. They ran it under the sink. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I always left some alcohol swabs in there as well. I let him do a real field dressing on the thing before. He goes, yeah. I put a lighter I, uh, in case you want to, like, you know, run a lighter over it or something I'll first, this, kill the germs. The woman could stitch up a wound or fuck herself with a clean dildo. You know I mean, that's... Who finds a dildo? I mean, if you found, like, a pocket pussy <laughs> in the drawer... He's a next level crack. I mean, to go to see, goes, oh, look at that, a used dildo. I'll give it a run. <laughs> what? what? It's a dildo, too. He's not even talking about vibrate. A dil- you want to fuck yourself with Would it. Would you put in a mouthpiece you found in a fucking nice... No. Oh, thank God. Someone else left there. I forgot my night guard, but luckily there was a night guard. <laughs> yeah. Who just, uh, who just was like... He goes, oh, I left my retainer at home. Oh, someone left their retainer here. All right, you know what? Pay it forward, right? Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to go sleep now. (laughs) This guy must have a similar overbite. Oh, cool. No, no. This is a vision line that was in this holiday intro. So that's where I start getting... I get 
boy. That's a very I'm good point. A little wonky with this guy. It's a good point, dude, because he's like, now the women that did, I was even more disgusted yeah. with. The women that did were zombie hookers. <laughs> he goes, uh, sometimes I thought about just burning down the motel when I saw a woman go at it with her. I mean, he puts dildos in. Did you, put, you think he put a No post- one ever, everybody who found the dildo in the room did everything <laughs> from nothing and was like, I'm leaving or I'm never staying here again. Or just going, or out loud going, to, one night, it's just one night in this god awful dump. Yes. Or you, or you call him and be like, hey, freaky, when you get out of your fucking crawl space, uh, do me a favor and come take these used dildos out of my drawer. Dude, how funny would that be if, if he tried to do that in 2018 and you just call his number and you just hear like, Vroom. Just right above your room, and you're like, Gerald, are you oh, in the vents? Right. And he goes, Son of a bitch. Yeah, that's, <laughs> he goes, and he goes, <laughs> Gerald, <laughs> Gerald, <laughs> Gerald, I <laughs> called not Gerald, <laughs> <laughs> Gerald, I called your phone, and you're up there, <laughs> Gerald's not here, <laughs> <laughs> just a friendly bird, <laughs> uh, I'm just one of those Colorado vibrating pigeons. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I didn't have a seltzer. I'm almost gonna explode. <laughs> uh, um, all right, let's go back to him. But him, like, but again, and by the way, when I watched this, I did think about the idea that oh, maybe he's leaving like packaged dildos in the thing, like oh, but like a like a free one for them to open. No. If, if anybody brought it back and slammed it on the counter and said, <laughs> he said some people did that yeah. and said, what's wrong? You don't clean your rooms. They wouldn't have done that with a new, they would, you'd almost, if you opened up and saw a fresh dildo in a sealed box, yeah. you'd be like, oh, I guess it's like a thing. If you stay here, like they give you a huh. dildo. It's definitely an out of box dildo that he's saying he would just leave by the fucking Bible, which is great. And also, you're right. The girls that used it, you're like, oh. There's no. I mean, my point being is that it's bullshit. It's more of his guy's lies. Yeah. Liar! 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 <laughs> test. Where he that left was the suitcase a test. Small suitcase in a closet of one of the twelve rooms. And when the person or persons came in to register in the office, the voyeur would pick up the phone and would talk to his wife. I had a call from a person who's left a suitcase with a thousand dollars and is left in a room. Did you have any record of anybody finding that? that First off, the room. pause. He's talking about people's morality at a motel in Aurora. Yeah. Do you know what Colfax is known for in Colorado? Um, softball and craft beer. <laughs> I don't know. Colfax Avenue is known for hookers. Oh, yeah. This I mean, is that's right where the motel. what he made. The, I mean, motel's, the motel's on Colfax. So when he's talking about, like, this is part of his bullshit, where he's like, there's a lot of tourists. No, there's not. No one's coming to fucking Aurora. It's a tourist that. trap. It's not a tourist it trap. It says adult movies, and it looks seedy and creepy. You know, in, the way tourists enjoy. In South Park, where the episode where Jimmy Volner is going to be in the talent show, mm-hmm. and he keeps getting boners, so he goes down to get a prostitute. It's where he meets Cock Gobbler. Uh-huh. It's like it's it's like Colfax in South Park. They reference Colfax. This oh, is where really? this guy's motel is from. Yeah. No, I mean you assume this is a, a pump and dump fucking motel. <laughs> yes, for sure. That's why when he keeps asking, like it's so like all these walks of different people in life. Oh wait, look, it's, they have videos of hookers on Colfax. Oh, cool. It says the wickedest street in America. And there's a guy in a fat guy in a Bronco shirt. Oh man, I can't see her. She's too small in the video. Oh, she ain't bad. Street? Street walker? Oh, you could do worse than a street walker like that, dude. She ain't bad yet. Huh? Yeah. She ain't bad yet. I'm but, saying, you get them young in the game. That's when you teach them the game. You build a bitch up, and mm, then you break it down. Iceberg J. <laughs> no, where's the video that said ho on Colfax? That was going to be fantastically Dan Soderville. Yeah. Just to let you know I loved off Chambers, which is different than Colfax. You sure. Know, it Chambers is, sure does run in the Colfax. I just really wish you guys would respect that. When this chick talks, yeah. it's coming. Yeah, my homegirl be getting it in for us though. You know what I'm saying? There's all kind of free meals and shit coming out this shit, baby. You feel oh. Me? Uh it's the dish. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, no, uh, here we go. Oh, no, this is how we find out. I go, Mom? Mom? <laughs> Dan, what are you doing? Mom is working. Renegade on wheels. <laughs> I can't wait till she comes Renegade out. Renegade on wheels, man. You know what I'm talking about? Man, black people know how to take a hey, video. 
Hey, I mean, yeah, not actually yeah. film the thing they're talking about, but they do the best commentary. Bitch, like 17 pimps in the last 72 goddamn... Oh, yeah! Oh. She's got a cart! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. See how you're doing. Killing the gang. Huh? Clearly spark that thing. Huh? Clearly spark that thing. Shake that thing. Spark huh? it! Shake what your mama gave ya. Shake it! Shake what your mama gave ya. She's like, what do you want? We got to, baby. You the motherfucking star. You a star. How you doing? T the D. Tell him. Tell him. Renegade not his best. You know who I am. Who are you? Hooker on Colfax. <laughs> Hooker on Colfax. Couple. <laughs> right, is um, You have prison. I'm sorry, children. I'm not joking. It's okay. Where's she from? Hey. The old country? Hey, hey you be careful out yeah. there, mama. Okay. You be good. Money. You be careful out there. Hey, she literally more right. careful hey. out there. Hey, what? You be careful you out there. You talking to Daniel Kestenbaum? You know who I am? Ooh, wait, I don't think I do. <laughs> oh, is she gonna show hey, her we titties? Go. You too hot to try, it, Mama. We gonna get up out of this thing. Oh. We proud to see you out here making it a I living. I was like, "What are you ball ass motherfuckers?" Uh, oh, what do you got? You got dick and money. Uh, I got party. What you guys can't party with you me? Like you can't handle it, huh? My pussy I, too tired for you, big faggot. I, I go to my friend Trish's house. Croissant down your downstairs playing Nintendo. <laughs> you want to go over there? Smoke, smoke plant. <laughs> She has good appetizers. I get the ride from Buzz. I go there later. <laughs> Dude, I love the party hearty. I gotta call Joel. <laughs> my buddy who I think his mom knows Buzz too. Oh, uh, did she fuck Buzz too? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, uh, do if Buzz was just running through the neighborhood, Dude, that's what I'm wondering. Oh, uh, yeah, it's possible, huh? Buzz. Uh, so Colfax is where his motel is. Yeah. Where this lady resides yeah. is also. His okay. address is like, I actually found the address. It's like 1221 Colfax. Okay. So it's like the manor house is right on the fucking hooker strip. Okay. And what's funny about that is we got like, like seven more minutes, so we should dive back in. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was burping. In it's okay. You're allowed. How do you know? You, you know we Shut know. up, you Russian whore! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they'll do. I, do. I, I hook out on Colfax. I go like this. Ah, it really takes me back. Damn, you ah, gotta come back home. The motel is twelve twenty one. Uh, address. I have the address right here. Yeah, I might be wrong, because that's our address here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar to our address. Hmm? I'm not joking when I say it's like very similar to our address. You mean to tell me? Your name is Corey. My name is Corey. Your number is 22, and my number is 222. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 12700. Twelve seven hundred. Like this at all? You're not like us. <laughs> <laughs> twelve. It's, You're the one who's not like. If you us. want to Google Map it, it's twelve seven hundred East Colfax Avenue. It's just been we should say it's been demolished. It's been demolished, been demolished, which we will get to in the movie. Yeah. But uh, if you want to see what it looks like in the medical center across the street, and then you can go to the soccer fields down the street on Colfax. Maybe where support some of the local kids whose fathers may not be so great. You know, maybe there's a big-headed kid with a lot of voices rambling around in his head. You should just take some time to get to know the kid. Maybe tell him to follow his dreams. Or you can make a left from that and go whack off in a crawl space. Yeah, go, or, you know, or you can keep going and get your carburetor rebuilt by a nice <laughs> game named Buzz who might take your mom out for a couple of days. <laughs> and Buzz will work for your mom's gash. Yeah. <laughs> I just going to let you know. Because Buzz, you, know, you change my brakes if I get my mom to suck you off. Yeah. You know it. Goes, That's what Buzz does. He goes, I'll get he's you. got a he's got a koozie that says that. Goes, That's I'll what get, Buzz does. He goes, I'll get you some Michelin pads on that bad boy. <laughs> oh, is your mom gonna throw her back into it? Because that's what Buzz does. Uh, he goes, depends. Are you gonna be playing video games in the basement, or is this a spend the night at McDaniel's? <laughs> Suitcase had a very small lock. Easily could be broken. And I was sitting up there, you know, watching them, you know, looking out of the thing, watching them. Then what do they do? They broke the damn lock. Now what do they do? Well, they had to get rid of the suitcase. They would sneak the suitcase out of the room and put it in the trunk of their car and drive it off really quick. One person took and threw it out the bathroom window. <laughs> I love it. Why? 
What was the suitcase about? <laughs> uh, he said that there was a thousand. He did this thing where he'd set him up when they were checking in. He would tell, he would call his wife and be like, someone left a suitcase in a room with a thousand dollars in it. And then he'd put the suitcase, he'd give them that room where the suitcase was just to see if they would report it or not. And oh, always they start toying with people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or I mean, said a lot of them would break the lock and it's the same thing with, um, it's the same thing with the, like the dildos. Like he was just yeah, doing yeah. it to watch to see what they would do. Kind of interesting. Like, the, like he would just keep doing social experiments with people, though. It is bizarre. Well, the next one that happens is really where we kind of draw a line in the sand it's, with Gerald. And I think I know where it is. Get, it's yeah. going to get like we where you're just like, wow, this get, guy's junk. Yeah, we can't get to it this episode. So we're going to have to do a part two of Voyeur uh, on the bonfire. At least. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to wrap it up, Jacob. That's what I'm doing, dude. Wow. God. How are you so hyped up? How you know. Uh, Jacob. Why don't you just get stoned with everybody else on the show? Yeah. We <laughs> think you were so much cooler if you did. Do you see? You don't see Lou going through this, but he's been hammered for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Lou thinks it's a live show. <laughs> wow, we, didn't really, we really didn't get a lot of calls today. We must we be just, slipping. Uh, dude, we are burning daylight. It's almost 30. Where yeah. this gets is this goes dark. Yep. And then goes right back to hilarious. Oh, so hilarious. Some of my, the funniest shit is at the end of this movie. Still to so, come. So yeah, we'll still, we're gonna do a part two of Voyeur on the Bonfire. Just follow us at the Bonfire, SXM on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever other fucking social media. We never media. tell people, but always follow us too. Yeah, follow at Big J Okerson and at Dan Soder. How about at Christine M. Evans, at DJ Lou Witzke, <laughs> at Lewis, Lewis Johnson. Johnson, right? Spell that. Lewis Johnson 2 1. Lou, oh, Twitter. that's right. Uh, Dion! <laughs> and then, uh, Lewis Jacob's Johnson not 2 on 1. Social media. And Jacob hates social media. He's on Facebook. He's a, no, <laughs> don't get him he's on Facebook. Bitter, he's a bitter man. We love you guys. Um, I love yous. I love yous. Winda. I'll see you tomorrow, race. Do the Winda. Do the Winda. Yeah. Do the walls. Do the sweat drop off my walls. Skeet, 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 as the kids oh. would say. Oh, <laughs> yeah.